Uh, using waste to purify water. Scientists in Singapore and Switzerland have managed to use the waste from the production of peanut and sunflower oil to filter out heavy metal from contaminated water. The result, water that meets international standards for drinking. The waste material is made into a protein membrane that comes from waste in the manufacturing process to make peanut and sunflower oil. The research team from Singapore's NTU and ETH Zurich in Switzerland says that protein membranes can filter filter out heavy metal in contaminated water. For this, Professor Ali Mizare from NTU, who is the principal investigator of this research, joins us. Professor, I think I just outlined how this works. Essentially, it's using these waste products, combining them with activated carbon to produce a membrane that attracts and therefore filters off these uh, heavy metals. Is that how this works? Uh, that's absolutely correct. You understood it very well. Uh, and so to give a bit more detail, basically you can think about those filters as molecular sponge. So we take those protein, we can make some very small fibers that are about 10 times smaller than human hair. And then when you filter the water through, it will absorb the uh, heavy metal contaminants. Oh, uh, one of the huge benefits of this should you make it uh, something that's scalable is that it's uh, it's cheap it does not require any kind of power to run and therefore you can have this uh, use this in countries where there are issues for example with electricity uh, what other advantages are there to using this uh, protein to uh, to combine it and then use it to filter off heavy metals so uh, one of the advantages is it is a universal. So you can filter not only heavy metal, but also organic contaminants or even bacteria. That's one of the advantage. And then the other one is that because you have no energy inputs, it's a, a more sustainable process. Because you know, when you do water filtration, uh, it take, tends to uh, use a lot of electricity and therefore it's responsible for a lot of CO2 emission. But with this technology, because you don't use any electricity, you can drastically reduce CO2 emission as well. So that's another advantage of, the, uh, of the, this approach. Uh, when we talk about it being scalable, uh, and this, uh, you have to make this, uh, make this more clear to a layman like myself. One kilogram of oil seed meal produces 160 grams of protein. So we're looking at really mm -hmm. using waste material from, say, a factory that uh, produces peanut oil. How much oil do we need to make? How much waste product from this before we can have a, a sustainable and cost-effective uh, water treatment plant that removes heavy metals? Um, so I don't have the exact number in my head, but what I can tell you is that uh, when you produce this kind of oil, you have a lot of those proteins that are just waste that are unused. Uh, or they may be used uh, to give to livestock. So uh, the scale up, uh, because it's waste product and a lot of it is generated during production of those oil, you actually have quite a bit available. So the scaling uh, compared to some other technology is actually, I would say, fairly straightforward. Uh you use the byproducts of peanut and sunflower oil. Can other plant-based materials also be used uh, mm -hmm. for this kind of procedure? Uh, that's one of the beauty of this technology. You could use any other kind of uh, waste protein. It could be soy, cereals. Uh, you could imagine uh, waste from palm oil, palm oil production, sorry, which is you know obviously very abundant in Southeast Asia. And those are other options that uh, we could explore in the near future. All right, uh, it's in the research stage right now. When, how long do you think we will, you will need before we will be able to see this being used commercially at scale? So it's a bit more advanced actually, uh, because there's already a spin-off company uh, from ETH Zurich, it's called Blue Act, that we are working with. So they have an exclusive, exclusive license and they're already selling this technology. In fact, it's been used in some pilot plants in Peru, in Sri Lanka and India with, uh, quite successfully. And we're looking into importing this technology uh, for the Southeast Asian market as well. Well, uh, 
it may not be that early stages yet, but at this point, do you foresee any difficulties with using this uh, as we progress and try to expand this to a more scalable, uh, to, to a larger scale? Um, considering what has been done so far with the, with the, with the spin-off that we're working on, I, I don't foresee many uh, uh, difficulty, a major difficulty, and that is because of the relative simplicity of the technique and how, uh, how you make those, uh, those, um, those membranes, because it's basically as simple as paper making, almost. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's, it's one of the, the great benefits of it. It's, it's fairly simple to make, so we don't foresee major uh, challenges at this time. Oh, thanks so much for all that, Professor Ali Miseré from NTU.